We're going to start off with a video about configuring Cura 2.1.2 for a brand new machine that isn't in the list of available uh, machines when you first install it. Um, we're also going to take a look at some of the critical settings for getting a successful first print. Um, now this tutorial will be relevant for a wide variety of machines that run off of the RepRap um, firmware, whether it's Marlin or Repetier. Um, however, specifically I'm going to do this for the uh, Monoprice Select Mini 3D printer. Um, it's been getting a lot of attention recently due to its extremely low price point of $200 and um, really good performance uh, for that price point. So I'll be using that as an example. Um, however, everything that I'm doing is going to um, carry over or be relevant to other printers as well. So without, um, without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do um, after installing Cura 2.1 is head to your program files uh, folder on your primary uh, drive and go into the first folder and you're going to find a resources folder. Enter and then machines. Head in there. You're going to find a whole bunch of these machine names .json or JSON files and these are the, the this is the new way that Cura is is uh, specifying machine parameters as opposed to launching the application directly and then um, adding new machines within Cura. You'll be adding these files and then they'll appear within Cura and you can use them. So um, if you want to make one completely from scratch um, and you're, you're dealing with a RepRap base printer, um, making a copy of something like the Prusa i3 um, would be a good way to get, get going. Um, I've already got one in here called the M200. And if you're wondering why I called it the M200, it's because the Monoprice Select Mini is actually a white label of the Malian M200. So the Malian M200 is, is, is what that printer is. Um, open that up with a text editor. Um, I'll be using Notepad++ uh, to view this. And, um, and here we can see all these lines of, of parameters. And we'll just take it kind of chunk by chunk. So the first one is all about the machine information. Um, you can give it an ID, just uh, replace between the brackets with, with whatever uh, name is relevant. Um, version doesn't have to doesn't have to have any value name again. Um, this is what's going to show up inside the program. Um, manufacturer, if you enter a new identity under manufacturer, this will actually create a new drop-down list within Cura. So it'll there will, will now be a Malian drop-down list within Cura if you if you add if you add a, uh, a parameter here. Um, author icon, I don't have any special icon for it. Uh, file format, G code, um, inherits, FDM printer. Um, it looks like perhaps um, Ultimaker is, an, is anticipating having multiple kinds of printer support within Cura, and so FDM printer.json is basically a category. Um, so of course we're going to want that in there. Uh, machine settings, this is the section that um, has the unique parameters that we're going to need in order to have a successful um, uh, print environment. And uh, the printer, the Monoprice Select Mini, does have a heated bed, so we're going to want true for that. Um, the width, height, and depth are all going to be 120 millimeters. Um, the machine center is zero. That is false. Um, it is not. It is not center zero. Um, if you're using the stock hot end, the nozzle size is going to be 0.4. Uh, material diameter is 1.75. Um, Ultimaker hasn't explained this that anywhere that I've seen the the nozzle heat up and cool down speed. So I'm going to leave them at the default of two. Um, that that seems to be fine. Um, the next chunk of five parameters uh, we can leave as zero. However, um, if you wanted to, you could measure the shape of the complete hot end, including cooling fan um, in the X and Y. Um, and this is going to be useful for a print option inside of Cura, where instead of printing multiple items simultaneously, um, one layer at a time, you can actually print each individual item in its entirety, and then the print head will go over to another section of the bed and print the next one. In order for it to do that and not have collisions, it has to know how big the print head is, and so these values would need to be populated. Um, but because it's a little bit of a more of an advanced option and um, and not something we're going to talk about today. Um, if you don't know the, the size of the head, just leave them as zeros. And for all at once printing, um, it never it's never going to matter. Um, and then the machine G code flavor is going to be RepRap. 
Um, the start and end code, um, these are the default rep wrap start and end code. And there's a lot of interesting things we can do in these sections with customizing the way that our printer um, begins and ends prints. However, for the purposes of just getting going and having successful prints, um, we can leave the default code in there. And um, what all these codes mean and how to use them will be a topic for another video. All right, so once you've done that, make sure you save it. Make sure it's inside of that folder. And then if Cure is open, uh, close it and restart it. And when you do that, and you go to Printer, Add Printer, you will have a new category with the printer you've just added. So you can give it a name, click Finish. I've already got it added, so I'm not going to add another one. And now when you go up to Printer, you're going to have a, uh, a printer of your uh, new creation available for you to use.